Welcome back to The Insiders, presented by Credit One Bank. Let's start out with some of the latest headlines on injuries around the NFL, starting in Seattle, Ian, where Tyler Lockett, the wide receiver, he's had an ongoing hamstring issue, didn't practice Wednesday, didn't practice Thursday either. Let's see in terms of whether he's out on the field today before drawing hard conclusions here. The Seahawks have a uh, plan, basically, with all their players who are banged up, especially veterans, where they will rest them a lot of times early in the week. If he does not participate again today, then you can start to question his status for Sunday. Keep an eye on this one later on in the day to see exactly how they list Lockett for this week's game. Yeah, you always feel like Ty Lockett ends up playing somehow. Another guy on my fantasy team, by the way. Mike Evans, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers standout receiver, not on my fantasy team. Not on my fantasy team, although I wish he was. He's a very good player. He's dealing with a quad injury but was a full participant yesterday. That is a good sign. Uh, actually, yeah, yesterday that was a good sign that players who were full participants on Thursday end up playing, so I would expect the same for Mike Evans in this Tampa Bay Bucks team that probably could use him a little bit. Texans running back Damian Pierce was spotted by reporters at practice earlier today. We'll see what that ends up meaning for his status, especially with Devin Singletary coming off a 150-yard game last week. Seems like Singletary at this point is the frontliner in the backfield anyway, though they'd obviously like to get that physical presence back with Pierce sooner than later here, Ian. Yeah, another injury that we have been tracking really for the last couple weeks. Trent Williams played last week. Uh, seemed to play okay, dealing with some pain. He did not practice yesterday, dealing with the ankle, but also I would say a little bit of a rest day. I'm uh, sorry, did not practice Wednesday. Did end up practicing yesterday. That is a sign that he should be back out there this week for the 49ers. And I don't know which particular reason was most important as far as why they looked like themselves last week, but you got to think having their all-pro left tackle likely helps. Meanwhile, of course, Deshaun Watson out for the season for Cleveland. Dorian Thompson-Robinson getting the first start for him as the full-time starting quarterback. Did get a last-minute start back in week four. It all comes at a unique time in the Brown season where they got the Steelers to Cleveland, coming to Cleveland as Cleveland comes off its biggest win. This is when the Browns made this trade. This is why he was brought here. Dustin Hopkins, one time, my friend. <laughs> one time. This will be a 40-yard field goal attempt for the middle of the fields. Three seconds left. Here's the snap. It's a good one. The hold is good. The kick is on its way. End over end. And it is good. The Browns have won it. They've come from behind. Dorian Thompson-Robinson will be out there after Deshaun Watson gutted it out through the second half of that game last week on a high ankle sprain and a broken shoulder. I talked with Amari Cooper on the phone yesterday as I prepare to head to Cleveland tomorrow for that game on Sunday. And it was, you know, Cooper was very honest about it, just saying, listen, we know the DTR can run. We know he can sling it. He's also just like any rookie quarterback. In other words, everybody else is going to have to rise up around him. What the Browns do have going for them here is they've got one of the best defenses in the NFL, statistically one of the toughest defenses we have seen in recent years. They've also got a run game, even though they, of course, don't have Nick Chubb. They remain one of the top rushing teams in the NFL. Kareem Hunt scored a rushing touchdown in five consecutive games here. It's not all going to be on the rookie's shoulders. A big part of this, too, Ian, is going to be doing something that at times P.J. Walker did not do, which is protect the football, don't give it away. God, I think so much of this game is going to be that. I was talking to someone there uh, a couple days ago. It was actually as we were trying to figure out who the quarterback was going to be, and the response I got was, if we could just run the ball and not turn it over, I think we're going to be fine with our defense. And I'm like, that is probably right. Like, their defense is good enough that if you just hand it off, don't throw it to the other guys, you should be good. Starting Dorian Thompson-Robinson does kind of make you believe that they are confident in him being able to do that. I would also say this, Tom, we, you, know, you sort of end up being an amateur detective doing these injury things and reporting and trying to figure all these things out. And as you look at all the quarterbacks this year, the ones who've been limited in practice, really in any way, who don't get the full complement of reps, they struggle, almost always struggle. And the last time DTR played, he got almost no reps and learned he was playing right before the game. That's almost unfair to him. Now he gets the full week. He knows he's starting. I, I know the Browns expect a much better performance from their rookie. 
Meanwhile, on the other side of things for Pittsburgh, they've got some injuries that they've been dealing with here in recent weeks. Mika Fitzpatrick, no practice the past two days. Certainly does not seem like he's going to be back from his hamstring this week. They do get tight end Pat Fryermuth likely back. They still got to activate him from IR, but full participant in Thursday's practice. Also, Deontay Johnson didn't practice on Wednesday because of a thumb issue. I actually talked to him as well on the phone yesterday. He told me it was a blocking play in last week's game. He just kind of got his thumb caught like in somebody's shoulder pad or helmet, which sounds like it'd be pretty painful, but he had just finished taking like 10 minutes of reps off the jugs machine. He's going to be fine at a time that the Steelers are still trying to find their momentum on the offensive side of the football. We all know the stats. They're the first team with a winning record since 1940 to be outgained in yardage in each of their first nine games of the season. But what are they doing well? They're running the football better these past couple of weeks with Jalen Warren and Najee Harris. And Deontay also told me the receivers are fired up this week because the way Cleveland plays, they know they're going to get a lot of one-on-ones on the outside. There might be the opportunity to make a few more explosive plays in the passing game this week as well. Bears-Lions also coming up this weekend here. Justin Fields back in the lineup for the first time as he goes up against a guy in Detroit who's always fun to listen to on game day. Time to go to work today, right? Look each other in the eye. Know who we are today, okay? It's not going to be perfect. It's not. We don't know what they're going to do on defense. Go to work, make plays, be playmakers we were brought here to be, okay? Let's go, win on three, one, two, three. Win. Hey, these young kids don't know this, but we always play good in the blueberries. Oh, yeah. We always play well in the blueberries. Turn one, set. 180, we're set. Goff back, looking deep downfield. Got a man wide open. It is Sam Laporta. Yeah, almost. 180, we're set. Goff takes. Keeps it himself, left side, touchdown, Detroit Lions! Let's go! Let's go! Take a look at the NFC playoff picture here. It is the Eagles on top, pending that Monday night rematch against the Chiefs. And look who's in the two seed right now. It is the Detroit Lions as they get set for a divisional game against the Bears, who if this picture were just extended a little bit to the right, you'd see them sitting there just outside of the hunt at this point. Justin Fields expected to be back this week as we welcome in our Bridget Condon and Mark Ross. The Lions, Bridget, you always want to take care of business in the division. They still got both their matchups coming up against the Vikings later this season, taking care of business against the Chicago team that I think most people would agree is a team they should beat, you would think would be fairly important for this team. Yeah, Tom, Dan Campbell said this week, a divisional win is almost essentially like getting two wins. They understand the importance of it. I talked with safety Kirby Joseph on the phone this week, and he told me he remembers that loss to the Panthers last year that essentially made them out of the playoffs. Of course, there were other teams involved late in the season, but it was their choice to lose that game, or not their choice, but they lost that game, and essentially it kept them out of the playoffs. He said, we want to be able to control our own fate. He says now that he's in his second year in the league, he really understands these divisional games and how much more important that they are. And he said it started last season. Remember that game at the end of the season against the Packers where they knew going into the game, win or lose, they weren't going to make the playoffs. But they went in and they fought hard because they wanted to start this season's momentum with that game last year. And he said, we've been coming out hard because we want to win this division and not have it anybody else interfere with whether we make the playoffs or not. But one thing he understands that needs to change on Sunday is this defense. This defense since week seven is giving up an average of 30 points per game. He said, even though he's had an interception in each of the last two games, they need to be better at getting to the ball. He said, we've been able to have some interceptions, but we need turnovers where we're punching the ball out. He said, Dan Campbell has been emphasizing that this week in practice. They've done more turnover circuits and more drills to punch out the ball. He said, we really need to take advantage of that and get off the field put our offense back on the field, and they really do believe against this Bears offense that's been struggling, they can get back on track on Sunday. One of the things I find fascinating here too, Bridget, is if you look at the Bears statistically right now, if you just look at them, first of all, in terms of who's been on the field, they've been starting an undrafted Division II quarterback, Tyson Bajan, for the past month here. They haven't had their starting running backs. They've had all kinds of issues on the offensive line. They're still one of the top teams in the league in rushing, Third downs, red zone, which are pretty critical categories. Now you bring a lot of those guys back. Maybe they can catch some momentum here. 
I was talking to Darnell Mooney on the phone yesterday, and he said at practice, he kind of like stopped and looked around and was like, wow, for the first time, I have all five of my starting O-linemen together since training camp. That hasn't happened all season. Plus, Khalil Herbert is back. He, of course, needs to be activated off IR, but was a full participant yesterday in practice. This defense is getting healthy. But the biggest storyline, Justin Fields, is expected to start on Sunday. He said this week in the locker room that he's excited for that opportunity. And, you know, I asked Mooney, what's the biggest difference that you see with Justin Fields under center compared to maybe Tyson Bajan? He said his secret weapon, which is his legs, were throwing the ball downfield a lot more at practice this week with her, uh, I'm getting confused with my Justins, with Justin Fields under center. And he said, you know, we need to help him. Justin Fields, you remember the three games before his injury? He led the NFL in passer rating, and they're hoping he can just kind of return to that form. And this team believes they can shock the world. Somewhere yeah, Bridget, uh, Justin shocking. Herbert, Justin Fields. <laughs> Too many. Leo Mack. <laughs> Khalil, Khalil Herbert, Herbert. I know. right in there, somewhere <laughs> in that matrix. All right, Mark, Mark, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, just continuing with Justin Fields. Yeah, it would be shocking the world for them to make the playoffs. I'm looking at the bigger picture of Justin Fields throughout this stretch here, this finishing stretch, can show he's the guy. He's shown the flashes with the legs, as you mentioned, Bridget. Has gotten better with the passing before he got injured. And for the Bears franchise, if I'm Ryan Poles, the GM there, I'm looking at – Man, can Justin Fields go prove that he's a legitimate playoff caliber quarterback, an MVP level quarterback? That would be the best case scenario because then you've got those two picks. They're sitting at number one and number five right now. Who knows where those two picks will be when it all plays out, but it looks like they'll be in the top five. So then everything else opens up for the Bears with those two picks where, hey, if Justin Fields proves he's the guy, then you can do anything with them trading, taking a Marvin Harrison Jr., if he shows he's not the guy, okay, now we can take our quarterback of the future with that star-studded cast if Caleb Williams is right there. So the Bears have a lot of options depending on how Justin Fields plays down the home stretch. And then you've got those two picks to open it up, kind of like we talked about Kyler Murray in that situation there with Arizona. If Kyler proves he's a guy in Arizona, has a lot of options. But, you know, you got to be thinking good long-term with however the direction is with the Bears there, Tom. Mark, Bridget, thank you very much. Look forward to talking to the two of you again soon. Justin Fields.